In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this stunning website. Look at it. It's beautiful. Just a breath of fresh air. It's refreshing, clean, and really modern in both its layout and design. It's simply inspiring and just a pleasure to use, meaning your audience is going to get an amazing first impression of your brand and they'll really enjoy using it. Let me tell you, in the online world, you have less than five seconds to grab someone's attention before they click away. So imagine, really imagine, having your very own website that not only grabs your audience's attention, but really captivates them, keeps them engaged, and compels them to buy. And I'm gonna show you how, using my three-step WTC system, to not only attract and wow your audience, but also show you how to turn them into fans and paying customers and ultimately help you build a base for your business you can be truly proud of. It's awesome. I'm James Stafford from WebsitesMadeEasy.tv and I seriously cannot wait to show you how to get started with your very own website. The whole process is so simple because you don't need to have any technical skills at all. By simply using copy and paste, and by dragging and dropping the different elements of your website together, you'll be up and running pretty quick. It's going to be a fun learning adventure, and both you and your audience are going to love it. And I'm going to walk you through the entire process step by step. So before we dive right in, let me walk you through exactly what you're going to be learning and building so you have a clear mental picture of your new website. Check this out. This website is built using something called WordPress, which is a breeze to use and is one of the best content management systems out there. You can see straight off the bat that the design of this website is not only slick, but it's really professional and no one will believe you made it yourself. I've based the design of this website on the kinds of websites big organizations and Fortune 500 companies like CNN, Apple, Spotify and Lyft have created, and I've put it together in one clean, crisp site that's super easy and intuitive to use for your audience so they have a great experience with your brand online. Plus, it looks stunning, and it's definitely something you'll be proud of. These companies spend tens of thousands of dollars on their website, but you'll be able to build it for next to nothing, saving you a ton of money in development costs and allowing you to focus on serving your audience without any stress or hassle. So if you're a small business owner or entrepreneur, then keep watching because I'm going to guide you through the process and show you how to add in the key ingredients to your site, which will essentially magnetize you to your audience and help to make you money. So let me quickly show you each section of the website you're going to build right now. So this is the homepage. It's clean and modern and fully customizable so you can really engage your audience and create a site in line with your business goals and vision. Now, the services section is your opportunity to connect with the needs of your audience by showcasing how you can solve their biggest problems because your job as a business is to provide solutions to the pain points of your customers. One of the best ways of getting prospects to repeatedly come back to your site and buy something is by demonstrating value to your audience through valuable content based around their needs. And this is why we need this section here, which is our call to action. And a call to action is also known as a CTA and is exactly what it means. It's literally a call to take an action. So you're asking your audience for an email address in exchange for valuable content, meaning you can grow your base of potential customers by demonstrating value through solving a problem. So for example, our call to action at Websites Made Easy is create a profitable website with our signature three-step WTC system. Get started now. And by clicking get started now, they're sent to an email contact form. This is game changing because once you have a subscriber, you can continue to build a relationship with them through email. And I'll show you how to set this all up. Plus you can add a call to action on any page of your website. So prospects don't have to click around your site trying to find it. And in this video, I'll show you how. 
Next, I'll show you how to make this section really killer by adding in a featured work or portfolio section to showcase your work and create a story in the mind of your audience. You've heard the expression, a picture's worth a thousand words. And this beautiful design is gonna help facilitate that because you're connecting with your audience through imagery, which tells a great story. You'll learn how to add video so you can create an emotional bond with your audience, which deeply engages and connects with your audience, encouraging them to buy. I'll also show you how to add in a blog, which is really powerful because it allows you to talk to your audience about the things that matter to them the most, therefore building and establishing the know, like, and trust factor with them. Plus, it gives them a reason to keep coming back to your website repeatedly. There's also a sidebar here as well, which is fully customizable, and you can add in things like your social media feeds or even show some of your most popular blog posts down the side here, and I'll walk you through how to do all of that. You will learn how to add in customer testimonials, which are super powerful because they present an honest, unbiased voice about your products or services, increasing trust and helping to grow your business through new customers. In the footer, you'll learn how to add in your social media channels to build social proof. And I'll show you how to add in this killer share tool, which helps make your content go viral. So you get a ton of free traffic from people sharing your stuff. The About Us page is where you talk about how you can help and benefit your customers. So in my case, I help business owners and entrepreneurs build profitable businesses online using my signature three-step WTC system. I'll also show you how to add in additional pages that include text and images to really grab your audience's attention. You'll even learn how to link pages to other pages on your site. For example, a contact us page. And don't worry, I'll show you how to set that page up as well too. On this page, I've included the actual address and even a map. All of these things really help to create trust with your audience and reassures them that they can talk to you if they have any issues, which is awesome. Plus, I'll teach you how to embed audio, video, and images on your website, changing the headings and the title, and even add your own logo and change the colors for a truly customized site that is geared towards making you money. Over the last few years, I've helped thousands of people just like you build a profitable online business using their website as the foundation for their success. And now I want to help you create your dream business online, which is designed to wow your customers and make you money. So I hope you're ready to get started with your learning adventure. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it just takes three simple steps. And all you need to do is literally just follow along with me. We'll be referencing my blog throughout the video, which has all the steps of the learning adventure, you can access that here at websitesmadeeasy.tv forward slash blog forward slash adventure. So let's dive straight in. Now, my signature three-step WTC system stands for website, traffic, and conversion. So essentially, I show you how to build your website, get traffic to it, and then show you how to convert that traffic into paying customers. So step one is website, and we're gonna be using WordPress to build your website, which is a simple web building tool that allows you to have your website up and running fast, and it's used by millions of businesses worldwide and is loved by Google. To get your website online, we need to complete three stages. Now stage one is picking out in registering your website address, which is also known as your domain name. Stage two is using WordPress to publish your first ever website, and stage three is getting your site online so it can immediately be viewed by visitors on the internet. Now, let's start with your domain name, which is the name of your website address. For example, mine is websitesmadeeasy.tv. Once you have your domain name, you're gonna need something called a hosting service so your website basically has somewhere to live on the internet. Hosting is crucial to getting started online and is no different to you moving into a new home and letting people know where your home is so that when they search for you, they know exactly where to find you. It's super easy to set up, and to do that, we're going to head over to HostGator.com. Now, I use HostGator not only for myself, but also for all my websites made easy members because they're super reliable and have awesome customer service. They know WordPress and are available 24-7 phone and chat support to deal with any issues or to answer any questions. Plus, I've been using these guys going on like eight years now without any real problems. 
To help you get started with HostGator, I've got a special coupon code. This will knock off 50% off your hosting to get you up and going, saving some. Just be sure to enter the coupon code WordPress Hero at the checkout to get half off your hosting. Okay, so what you want to do is click on Get Started Now in the middle of the page. Then select the Hatchling plan if you only want one site. But if you're planning on having multiple sites, then I recommend you go with the Baby plan as this will give you unlimited domains to work with. Now, you want to register a new domain name. Now, hopefully you've really thought about this and picked a good domain name. If the name you want is not available, keep drilling down and using different URL extensions such as .com, .net, .org, etc., even playing around with the actual name. Now, my domain name is WebsitesMadeEasy.tv. I chose this because I thought it was appropriate considering most of the content on my site is video. In this video tutorial, we're going to create a new site for demonstration. So that being the case, we're going to name this new website WebsitesMadeEasyDemo.com. So ultimately, whatever you're comfortable with. Then from the drop-down, select monthly if you don't want to pay for your hosting up front. Now, I'm going to select the yearly option. Typically, when you invest in something up front, you're more likely to commit to it and follow through. And this is a great way to commit and invest in your goal of having your own website live online. Now, once you've got that sorted, you can go ahead and review your order. And if you're happy with it, simply enter in your payment details. Now, one thing you'll notice when you review your order is that it will have added on a lot of additional extras which you don't need. So you can just uncheck the boxes under hosting add-ons as all these are going to cost extra. In the coupon code box, enter WordPress Hero to save 50% off your entire order. Be sure to validate it and it will bring the cost of your hosting right down. So go through the rest of the process, just follow the instructions, and I'll see you back in a moment. Okay, I'm back, and I've confirmed my order, and I'm now on the thank you page. Congratulations, you've successfully completed stage one in our three-stage process of setting up your website, and hopefully the first stage was a piece of cake for you. Okay, so on to the next stage, which is installing your actual website onto your domain name. Again, the whole process is very simple. All you need to do is follow along with me, and you'll have this installed in no time. You should have received a welcome email with your website information straight into your inbox. If it doesn't arrive, be sure to check your spam box. If it's still not there, give it some time. It should arrive within about 10 to 20 minutes or sooner. You're going to need this email to help set up your new website, so go ahead and find the email and open it up. I want you to pay attention to the information inside. In particular, have a look at your username, which is what you would have selected during purchase. You'll also need to make note of your password. I suggest you copy your password and then click on the cPanel link here. It's easier if you right click and open this up in a new tab. Okay, so now you want to enter in your login details from the email you received. Once you've logged into your cPanel, you'll see a page full of different icons and it can seem a little scary and overwhelming. Right now, all you need to do is scroll down towards the bottom where you'll see a section called Software and Services. You're looking for the Quick Install icon. Go ahead and click that. You want to click WordPress. Now you'll come up with a form asking for some simple information. You'll also need a good website title and fill out the name of the person who will be maintaining the site for you. It can be your name or whoever's looking after your site for you. You'll need to add in a really good email address where you can receive incoming emails. Also, add in your name and then click on Install WordPress. Wait a few moments as your new WordPress site installs. As soon as it's done, it will give you the details for your new site here. All you do is copy the password as this will be your password for your new site. The username will be whatever you selected during setup. Okay, so now you want to click on this link here, which will take you to the login page or the dashboard for your new WordPress site. When you click on the link, you're most likely going to hit an error and it will tell you that the website isn't available. Don't panic because this is absolutely normal. All this means is your new site can take up to a few hours to fully replicate to the servers or become live online. So I'll be back as soon as that is done. Okay, sometimes it'll take you right to your login and other times it'll take you here and this is completely normal. So what you're going to do is log in, and we have to all we have to do is point our name servers. And this is you don't need to be concerned with this. It's real simple to do. We'll just go ahead and log in here, and then we want to go to new domain management portal. 
So basically, you can access this page by going back to your welcome email, right-clicking this and open it up in a new tab. Okay? So if you get lost for some of it, all you have to do is just log in here. So this is your billing details, not your WordPress login details. So whatever you chose for uh, the good email to access or that's associated with your hosting account. Then you want to head to Domains and then select your domain right here. And then head down and select on Name Servers. And it's that easy. And go ahead and select Automatically Point My Domain to My Hosting Account and then Save Name Servers. And for some reason, if it's not there, you can get your name servers in your welcome email. That should be under your um, account information with your cPanel. And you'll see it under, it says, under password, name server one and name server two. And you would just copy those in and pop them in and paste, or paste them in right in the name servers area. And then we just wanna go ahead and save name servers. Okay, the name servers are saved. And now you should have access to your WordPress website. And for whatever reason, if this you ever get hung up on this, it's real easy, you can always just uh, access HostGator chat support or they have 24 hour, 24-7 uh, phone support. Okay, we can go ahead and go ahead and log out. Open link in a new tab. And if you're still getting that error page, that's normal. It takes a, a little bit for your new domain to propagate, which means it comes to become live on the internet. So just be patient and it should be live soon. And basically all this is, is your domain name and then at the end of it, you would just put wp-admin. And this is where you'll access your WordPress website. Just to remind you that you should have received an email with your login details for your new website. Go ahead and click on that link to the dashboard of the login page, which will end with a forward slash wp-admin. Then all you need to do is add in your login details and voila, you're in. Okay, so this brings us to the end of stage two, which is installing your WordPress site. Hopefully the process was straightforward and painless and not at all scary. Okay, on to stage three, which is getting your website live and ready to go. Okay, now we're in the WordPress dashboard and go ahead and just say I don't need help right here. I love this. This is where all the goodies are. You get to have some fun and customize your site to your liking. This is where you'll be able to add in your content, set up your pages, control the layouts, add themes, and just about everything else you need to build out your site to make it awesome and ultimately serve your audience. But before we get started, you can always access your website by clicking this home icon right here. And we'll just open this up in a new tab. So go ahead and click, right click it and open this link in a new tab. And I would suggest you leave this tab open. This way you have a point of reference in terms of any edits and changes we're making as we press through the tutorial. So let's go ahead and take a peek and see what the site looks like right now out of the box. Not too exciting right now, but don't worry. We're gonna get this site dialed in, making it look awesome. You're gonna love it. So let's head back to the dashboard. And so I'm gonna show you how to properly set up your website so that it's ultimately set up for the best user experience in terms of functionality. It can be found online by Google and of course by people for your products or services and ultimately runs faster and smoother. So let's get straight into it. The first thing that you're gonna do is get rid of some default content that comes pre-installed on all WordPress websites. This way you ensure your site is unique, completely fresh and ultimately set up for your individual content. So let's do that right now. Sometimes you'll see notifications up here which are useless. So we can go ahead and just X these out because we won't need those. So then we'll head to Posts, All Posts, and then we're just going to Trash. Select this and then Trash it because this is just default content. We don't need this. Then we'll head to Pages, All Pages, and do the same thing. Click on title, and then you can actually drill down and say move to trash. Click apply. Perfect. And like I said, you're just getting rid of some default content that's installed on every WordPress website, which is useless, okay? Now, I'm going to be pressing through quite a few of these options in the menu area here. 
Now, don't let this overwhelm you, all right? We're going to cover all these concepts in depth as we continue to press through the tutorial, and it's my job to ensure that you understand these concepts as we unpack each one. And by the end, I'll make sure all of this lands for you, okay? So just follow along, and as we move through it, I'll, you'll start to conceptualize what's happening. I've been doing this for quite some time, and I know the best way to approach this so you understand what's happening as I move through it. I'm excited to be able to share this stuff with you. It's going to be a fun learning adventure, so stay plugged in, all right? So let's head to Appearance right here, and then click on Themes. Now, this is actually where it gets really cool. We're about to change the entire look and feel of your website. And you're going to do this by adding a new WordPress theme. And I've selected one that is absolutely perfect, and it's called Sydney. Now, this theme is really easy to use. You just pop in your content with drag and drop features. It is that easy, and you're about to see. Now, what's so cool about this theme are the various elements you can add to your site. Elements like an image slider, your services section, a call to action, a portfolio, video, blog, you name it, it has it. It's the perfect theme for your audience in terms of functionality. You'll be able to deliver a great experience to showcase your work and your messaging that really speaks to the specific desires or the pain points of your audience. So ultimately, it's a win-win. So what we'll do is go ahead and click on add a new theme right here and then just search for Sydney. And this is it right here, then click on install. Then go ahead and click activate. Congratulations, you've just changed the entire look of your WordPress website. So if you head back up here and refresh, pretty awesome, right? And of course, you're gonna add in your own content to make this unique for your brand or your business. And you're going to do that by adding in drag and drop rows that make up the individual sections of the website. So for example, this is the slider section right here. Then you will have a row for your services section, and then another row for your call to action, another for your portfolio, blog, video, etc. So you'll see as we go through it, but each section, all you really do is pop in your content, and it's that easy. You're set to jet. So simple. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. Okay, before we go any further, I just want to clarify real quick what a WordPress theme is. Some people get confused by this. So here's a little analogy for you. Uh, think of a WordPress theme like the clothes you wear and pages, posts, and other elements like your actual body parts. So really the theme serves as the feel and functionality or the look of your website. I hope that helps. So I'm going to approach this WordPress site build out in a very natural way so you fully understand how all the bits and pieces fit together. So by the end of this, you understand all the concepts we've covered and are able to apply this stuff. And I know I've repeated myself here, but I just want to ensure that you're in the flow with me through this. So I'm going to do my best to explain each concept by explaining what each one is, why you need it, and how it's set up properly. So I encourage you to go through this video once, then go through it again and apply the concepts, ultimately learning what you've applied in practice, all right? Now you'll notice you should have a new notification here. It says this theme recommends the following plugins. You're going to want to go ahead and install these plugins. Now plugins are just little snippets of code that expand the functionality of your WordPress website. And we're definitely going to be talking about plugins a little bit more later. And I'll share with you my favorite free plugins to really get your site dialed in. So for now, go ahead and install these plugins. and then apply. Okay, and then let's go ahead and then X this. Then go ahead and click on return to required plugins installer. Then go ahead and select this box and activate and then apply. And then return to dashboard. Now that you have a new theme installed, you're going to create a couple of pages that are going to serve as the foundation of the site to properly set it up using the Sydney WordPress theme. So the first page that you're going to create is the home page. So we'll head over here to pages and then add a new. So this is where you're going to create your first page. So we're going to title this page home, then head over here and then select front page and then publish. The home page allows for you to drop in all the individual sections of the website. 
So the next page that we're going to create is the blog page. So we'll head over to pages and then add a new and then just go ahead and title this blog and then go over here under template and then select front page and then publish. This blog page will organize all of your blog posts in one place. Okay, so now that you've got that sorted, I want you to head over to settings and then general. And you're going to finish editing some of these settings to make sure your site is properly set up. So for site title up here, I'll just change that to websites made easy. For your tagline, I like to leave that blank. You can put in something kind of catchy or fun or something that's related to your, your business or brand. Website or the WordPress address here, do not change this. Email address, this is the email address. If you get any notifications through WordPress or any updates or if you change your password, you'll be notified through this email address. So be sure to have a good email address in there. And everything else looks good here. And then you want to be sure to always save the changes at the bottom. So then head over to writing. Everything looks good here. No need to save changes. Head to reading. Now this is extremely important. Where it says front page displays, remember the pages that you just created? Well, this is where this comes into play. So we want to change this to a static page. In your front page, you want to select as home. And then your post page, you want to select as blog. So by selecting these settings, you're creating the structure for your site to be set up properly using the Sydney theme. Then be sure to save changes. And then head down to discussion. And these are your blog comment settings and the criteria for comments on your individual blog posts. So everything is pretty good here. I would change where it says before a comment appears, change that to comment must be manually approved and then unselect this. This way you have control over the comments that are coming in and you can approve what you want to have posted to your blog. Then head down to default avatar and select Gravatar logo. Now this is actually really cool. It shows people's actual pictures when you select this. It's kind of like a Facebook profile image for websites. So if you just search uh, Google for Gravatar, you can get that set up. So go ahead and save changes. So the next setting you're going to edit is media. Now I love this because you get to upload all the custom images I hand selected for this website. And you can choose to use my images or you can use yours, of course. This way, you add all your images at one time and keep things pretty organized and easy as opposed to uploading images one by one. To grab your images, just head over to websitesmadeeasy.tv forward slash blog forward slash adventure, and you'll find the Sydney Adventure Image Pack in the website step. Then all you want to do is just click that link and save it to your desktop, and that's a zipped file, so you got to be sure to unzip it and all the images will be in the Sydney Media file. Once you've grabbed your Sydney Media file, and be sure to unzip it, and now I want you to head right up to Media, and then Add New. And this is where you're going to add all the images that I selected for this website. And you'll click Select Files, and then the file that you downloaded should be, should be called Sydney Media. So if you haven't unzipped that, make sure you do that, and then you'll see all these images in here. And all you have to do is really just highlight everything and it's only going to upload the images and go ahead and select choose and it's that easy and all these images have been optimized properly for this website so you really don't have to make any edits so it's really easy go ahead and upload it should take a minute or so okay awesome all the images have uploaded and what's really cool about this is that you just pop in these images right where they need to go and you're about to change the entire look of the site by changing the slider images. And it's gonna make the site really inspiring and awesome looking, and you're about to do that. But before you do that, I want you to head back over to Settings, and then click on Permalinks. Pay real close attention here. These settings are very important you get right. Okay, so what you wanna do is go ahead and select Post Name. Make sure that's set to Post Name. 
So what this is going to do ultimately is make sure your website post and page links are properly set up so the search engines and your audience can find you online. This is going to create very specific navigation in terms of what your pages and posts are about, allowing your audience and the search engines to find you based off specific search queries related to your content. It's crucial for search engine optimization. So make sure that's set to post name. And I hope that sinks in. It's very important. Okay, so go ahead and save changes. And that's it for the WordPress settings. Now it's time to have some fun and really build this site out using the Sydney theme. And like I said, what's so cool about this theme is it's literally drag and drop and pop in your content and you're good to go. And this all begins by heading over to Appearance and then Customize. Now you'll see a menu here with a bunch of different settings. And this is very similar in terms of what you just did, except these menu settings will allow you to customize the Sydney theme. Now I'm going to take you through each of the settings so you understand what they do. And as you're making changes, you'll see the changes reflect in the visual editor right here. So go ahead and click on the general settings up here. And everything is okay in here. Don't make any changes in here. Then head down to site title, tagline, and logo. Now this should look familiar. So we have it at Websites Made Easy in the tagline. You see the changes? Pretty awesome, right? Happening live. So we'll go ahead and just take out the tagline. And if you want to add in your own custom logo for free, we have a really quick tutorial that teaches you how to make one for free, which you got to check out. And we'll link it to the end of this video. I've gone ahead and created one with Logo Maker, which that tutorial basically covers that tool. It's a free tool. And I'll go ahead and select that image now, and you can use this if you'd like. So to add the custom logo, head up here to where it says Upload Your Logo, then click Select Image. And the image you want to choose is this cool little balloon right here. I thought it was kind of fun for the website. And there's so many options you can choose from over at Logo Maker, but this is kind of cool for now. So it's this small one, 22 by 30, and then choose image down here in the bottom right. And there it is. Kind of fun, right? Okay, so then we want to add in your site icon, which is the little image up top in the browser that you sometimes see right there. And this will be uh, for apps and for the browsers. So go ahead and select image. And this one needs to be bigger, 512 by 512. So select this one and then choose select down here. That's what it'll look like in the bot right over here. And then crop image. And that's it. And then save and publish up top. Okay, now that that's saved, go ahead and select back. And then head down to header area, then header type. And then for front page header type, you have three options. You have the full screen slider, which you're seeing here, which is several images up to five. Or you have just a single header image, which is just one image, or no header at all, which is only the menu. You don't, don't want that, obviously. So the full screen slider will leave it as default. And then for site header type, this is for your blog posts and pages. So it has no header basically focusing on the navigation. So there's no image up there. So I would leave it with no header. So everything looks good here. If you change anything, make sure you save and publish your changes and then head back. Then I want you to head down to header slider. I love this part. You're about to upload some really killer images that I hand selected that are inspiring, that are going to move your audience and really create that great experience. So let's upload those images now. Now, before we do that, head up here to slider speed and you'll see it's set to 4,000 milliseconds, which is four seconds. I would leave it between 4,000 in 6,000 milliseconds. Next, I want you to go ahead and remove the default slider images. So go down and then click remove and then select image. And then select this image right here and then choose image. Love it, this image is awesome. So from here, go down, do the same thing. Remove and then click select image and then grab this image right here, choose image. Easy, right? Now for the third image, just go ahead and select image, click that, and then click this image right here, and then choose image. Now you have your three hand-selected custom images that are just really inspiring and going to breathe life into this site and make the experience really good for your audience. Now you want to add in your headlines and subheadlines. 
I'm going to go ahead and add in some aspirational headlines and subheadlines. And you can add in these or you can add in something that benefits your audience, the one big idea of your brand or business that helps your audience. So head down to right below this image. And then I'm going to title this in all caps, imagine. And then below it for the subtitle, our subheadline, dream with your eyes wide open. Kind of fun, right? And then below this image, in all caps, journey. And then the same for the subheadline. And then finally, create. So what I really like about this is it's just inspiring messaging, and that's the theme that I wanted for this website. So I could have also chose something like this. WME, which is Websites Made Easy, as the main headline. Create a profitable website in three steps with our WTC system as the subheadline. Now the cool thing is, is you can always change this later if you're not 100% sure right now. So if you're drawing a blank, you can always use my headline, no big deal, and just have some fun with it. You can always change it. Okay, once you've got your slider images and headlines sorted, you can head down to the call to action settings right down here, the call to action button settings. And right here you'll see it says URL for your call to action button. Now, if you just leave this as is and you click the click here to begin in the middle of the page, that's gonna take you right down to your services section and your call to action section. So that's actually pretty good and I would leave that for now. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we continue to build out the site. You can also link it to a page. And if you are to link it to a page, I would link it just to your Contact Us page. So basically what you would do is you would have a link, and I'll show you an example. It would look like something like this. And then you would just erase all this and drop the link right in there. And that would link it right to that page. So for now, go ahead and make sure this is set to pound primary and leave it set at that and below that you'll see text for your call to action button click here to begin is fine start now begin today things like that just a direct call to action is what you want there now head back up and of course save and publish all your changes okay now go ahead and click the back button and then head down to header image remember this is just a standard website header which is just a basic header image and we're going to be using the custom slider, so we really don't need this. This is just where you would change that image if you wanted to use it. So go ahead, and if you do change it, save, make sure you save your changes, and then head back. Next, go ahead and click on Menu Style. And for the option Sticky Menu, leave the selection on Sticky Menu. This means the top menu will follow you down the page versus a static menu that stays up top the entire time. The next option is menu style. I would leave it set to inline. Centered centers your menu and your logo. So go ahead and save any changes and hit the back button. Then hit the back button again and head down to blog options. I would leave everything the way it is in here. The settings are pretty ideal. And if you were to change anything, you could change the blog layout, which is just a you know one post after another vertically versus like a grid style where you see all the posts horizontally. Okay, so be sure to save any changes you may have made by clicking saved and then select the back button and then head down to fonts. And this is where you can change your fonts and you can change the size of your fonts down here. And play around with it and see what you prefer. I think for the most part they've done a pretty good job. I like to have a big headline on my site. With the Sydney theme, it doesn't allow for you to just change the size of the headline by itself without affecting other elements. So in a little bit, I'm going to show you how to add a plugin that allows for you to add in some custom code to be able to make that change if you want a bigger headline. Just something to take note of with WordPress themes. It's pretty much what you see is what you get. You can't really customize them unless you want to edit the code. So that's just something to be mindful of. And that's really the beauty of WordPress is these little plugins that are created to really customize these sites to your likings. And like I said, we're going to talk about plugins here in a little bit. But that's where WordPress is really, really powerful. And this plugin you're going to add makes it really easy to do that. So go ahead and save any changes and hit the back button. And then head down to the footer settings. Now everything looks good. You don't need to change anything here. This is the area at the very bottom of the site where you're going to add in your social platforms in a bit. 
So for example, let's close out of this. And then if I just click to begin, this area right down here is the footer. So your social platforms will go right down here in the bottom. So head back to customize and then head to colors. And you're gonna make one change here. Head to general and then select primary color. And obviously this is personal preference. I like a different color. You can leave this red if that's what you want. Just make sure you remember or save this color code right here. I'm gonna add in a different color code and you can also find this on the blog, websitesmadeeasy.tv forward slash blog forward slash adventure and look in the website step. So the code is, I just like that a lot better. So go ahead and save and publish. I just think it looks more congruent with the theme of this side and cleaner. So, and then go ahead and click back. Go ahead and be sure to save any changes and then click back again and then head down to actually background image. Now, you don't need to be concerned with this at all for this site build out. So for menus, this is the navigation that you see at the top of your website. And you're gonna create a custom menu later on once your site is completely built out. So we'll be coming back to this setting a little bit later. And then go down to widgets. And widgets are independent sections of content that can be placed in widgetized areas, usually sidebars. So widgets are basically the little things that you see like recent post categories or a Facebook fan page on the sidebars of blogs. Those are little widgetized areas, if that makes sense. So the next setting is the static front page. Now this will look familiar. So we adjusted this universally with the WordPress settings, but we wanna do it here as well if it's already done it, which it looks like it is. But if, you're, if yours is not changed, make sure you change these settings. So for front page, a static, make sure this is set to front page home and posts blog. And like I said, this creates the infrastructure for the Sydney WordPress theme to be properly set up. And then go ahead and of course save any changes and then hit the back button. And that is it. We are done with the customization of the WordPress universal settings and the Sydney theme settings. So now we're gonna build this out and we're gonna start doing that through the use of plugins, which I've mentioned and kind of alluded to so far throughout this uh, tutorial. So now plugins are just little snippets of code that enhance and expand your WordPress website. And this is really where WordPress shines and it's just incredible what you can do with your WordPress website with the use of plugins. So we're gonna jump into that right now. Okay, awesome, you've now laid the foundation for your new website. You should be pumped, so congrats for that. Now we're moving on to step two, which is traffic which is all about setting your website up properly for the ideal user experience. The more eyes you get, the more subscribers, the more customers ultimately. And I'll walk you through some easy hacks and my favorite free plugins to make your website dialed in for you and your audience. So now that you have your settings all in order, you're gonna to wanna to pay really close attention here and check out these little goodies that we're about to add to your website. This is where WordPress really sets itself apart from other website creation tools, and it's game-changing. So you're about to add six of my favorite free plugins, making your site very powerful, ultimately running smoother and faster, and set up in a way so people can find you online to share your content with friends and family, and of course, set up for a very good user experience, allowing you to turn your audience into subscribers and potential customers. So let's start with the first plugin. So I want you to head over to the menu. So we'll X out of this, and then head back to, see where it says websites made easy up here? click dashboard, and then down here where it says plugins, select add a new. Now for the first one, I just want you to add in simple custom CSS. And you should see it pop right up. And then go ahead and install now, and then activate it, and it's that easy. That's how you add a WordPress plugin. So this plugin will allow for you to make simple edits and tweaks to the Sydney theme. Remember, I'm gonna show you how to make the main header title bigger. This plugin is how you do that. It's basically a simple way to add custom CSS to your WordPress website. It allows you to add your own styles and override the default code of the theme to customize it to your liking.
Okay, now that you have that plugin installed, time for the next one. So head down to plugins and then add new. And in the search field here, type in site origin widgets bundle. And there it is right there. Go ahead and install it. And then activate. Now, widgets are just independent sections of content that can be placed into widgetized areas, and they're usually the sidebars, and this will allow us to add in our social media platforms and Google Maps. So we'll do that here in a little bit. Okay, time for the next plugin. Go down to Add a New under Plugins, and in the search field, type in WP Supercache, and it should pop right up. Perfect. Go ahead and install this and then activate. Okay, so now without getting too technical, what this basically does is speed up your entire website. And this is really important to have because the search engines like Google look at load time of websites and blogs as criteria for a viable source of info because people are on the go. They're not wanting to wait around for a slow website or blog. So this is going to speed up your entire website, ultimately running faster and smoother. So for now, we're going to keep this plugin disabled until we're done building this site out. And you'll see this little notification up here. It says WP Supercache is disabled. So we'll go ahead and activate this when we're done building out the site. This way, you're seeing your changes real time and not seeing a cached version of your website. Okay, now that you have that plugin installed, head back to Add New under Plugins. And you're going to search for Black Studio Tiny MCE Widget. There it is right there. Go ahead and install and then activate. Now what this does is allow you to edit pages and posts like a Word document. So you can bold, italicize, add images, etc. It really makes it super easy to customize your content. Okay, head back to Add New under Plugins. And the next plugin you're going to add is called Yoast SEO. So type that in. Y-O-A-S-T-S-E-O. -S -S and there it is right there. Go ahead and install now. And then activate. Now this plugin is for search engine optimization purposes. It does a pretty amazing job and helps people ultimately find your content online. This means you can choose how your content will look on Google searches. So when people look for specific things related to your content, they will see a snippet of your content and choose whether they want to click on your website or not. So it's crucial this is set up properly so you can be found online for your specific products and services, your blog posts, etc. I'm going to show you how to set this up right now. So head down here to SEO and then click on Dashboard. Then go ahead and click on Configure the Plugin. And this is just the Yoast initial setup to make the plugin work properly. And this right here is not necessary unless you want to get updates from Yoast. So go ahead and click Next. And this is going to be for this site is a live site with real traffic. Go ahead and click that. Next. Then go ahead and click on the appropriate selection. If this is a business or personal site, select Company here. And you can upload an image, like a logo, whatever, right there. You can choose that. And then next, you can put in your social channels here if you like. I'm going to skip that. All these settings are good. This is the visibility for your website. So leave everything. Everything looks good here. Go ahead and click next. So if you're going to have multiple people contributing to your site, like different bloggers, then you would probably want to put yes here. So I'm going to select no. This step is not necessary. You can do this if you'd like. It basically connects your Google account with Yoast, and it authenticates it. It's not necessary. You can go ahead and click next. Website's made easy, and unless you want it to be something else, put that there, and that's it. So go ahead and close this out, and you are now search engine ready. Very cool. 
So the major benefit for this is search engine optimization. So you can be found online. And without this, you're really kind of in the dark. Search engines like Google have no way of identifying what your content is specifically about. So it's gonna help index your content according to what you want your pages and posts to show up for so you can be found online. So you wanna make sure this is set up properly like we just did. Okay, time for the next plugin. So head back up to plugins and then add new. And in the search field, type in Sumo Me. Now this little plugin is awesome. There's so many little tools that this plugin has and you're about to see. So click on install now and then activate. And then if you head right up here to this and click on this little crown icon, then just go ahead and put in your email address and then a good password and this will set up your account. And then sign up, it's that easy. Sumo Me has an entire suite of website traffic tools which are incredible. For now we'll just get started with Share. So go ahead and click on this and then just turn it on and it's that easy. Then go ahead and close this out. So go ahead and click on the little home icon and right click and open that up in a new tab. And then you can see there's the Share features. Pretty awesome, right? So this little tool is awesome. You can get up to 20% more free traffic using this tool. So basically what Share does is it makes it super easy for your visitors to share your content to their friends and family and others. The more people share your site content, the more viral traffic goes back to your site ultimately. So people can like, tweet, or even pin your content through the use of the social sharing buttons. So put it this way, if you don't have this tool, you might as well be invisible. You'll, you'll find it much harder to get any traction without a social media presence. So go ahead and head back to the WordPress dashboard. You either go up here to your site title and click on dashboard or go back to the other tab that's still open if you still have that open. Then head down to plugins and then add new and then search for contact form seven. This is a great tool for collecting email addresses and starting with email marketing. So go ahead and install now and then activate. And we're gonna get this plugin set up in a little bit. This will allow for you to add an email contact form on your website. This is extremely important to have. This is the bridge to connect you with your website visitors. It's very, very important to understand that when people come to your site usually, they may just come once, never to return. That's typically the case. People just come, come to your site, check it out, and then they're gone. You'll never see them again. So by getting people's email addresses, you're able to continue the conversation through email and build relationships, sending them back to your website and blog repeatedly. And you can send email updates with your latest sales and products. And I like to use it to build the know, like, and trust factor by adding more value in sending emails out with my latest blog posts. So people buy from those they like and trust. And there's no better way to do this than continuing to add more value through your blog. Ultimately, this gives you the opportunity to connect individually with each visitor, creating an open line of communication, stimulating new relationships, and of course, allowing you to market your brand products and services repeatedly. So this brings us to step three, which is conversion. This is all about setting up your website properly to turn visitors into subscribers and potential customers. I love this part. I'm gonna show you how to add your blog to kick this step off. Before we get started, I wanna ask you a question. Would you be interested in learning how to deeply connect with your audience, making them come back for more over and over again, ultimately creating trust, or what I like to refer to as the no like, and trust factor? Would this be something you would like to know how to do? This is where your blog comes in, and it's a game changer because blogging is one of the best ways to establish your credibility and authority, educate your community, and build a personal connection with your audience all at the same time. And when it's done right, blogging can help build your audience and encourage them to become lifelong customers with you. The thing to remember is that people online are usually searching for solutions to their problems and blogging about the topics most relevant to your audience is what's gonna help them have confidence in you and your products and services. Like I said, blogging is essentially about building the know, like, and trust factor. In short, you're more likely to buy from someone you trust 
And not having a blog and just relying on your site can actually make it very hard for you to build your brand and your presence online. You see, unlike your website, which consists mostly of static pages, like your contact us page or your about us page, that more or less stay the same, the blog has content which is updated on a regular basis, meaning content is always fresh and relevant, therefore giving visitors a reason to return to your blog and your site repeatedly. Plus, blogs allow your audience to comment on your posts, creating engagement and engaging with your audience and is an awesome way for you to build your relationship with them so you can understand what they want and need the most and help provide solutions to their problems. Another huge bonus is that Google loves blogs and the fact that the Google search algorithm is based on delivering the most valuable and relevant content to the needs of users. And this means that Google will always boost content from sites which are fresh, relevant, and most of all engaging. So let's get straight into it. And I'm gonna show you how to properly set up your blog for your audience for the best user functionality. So pay really close attention here. And in this tutorial, I have three individual posts I'm gonna show you how to add. The first post is related to websites. The second post is related to traffic. And the third post is related to customers. So I'm gonna show you how to add three different categories for each of these three posts. And adding categories creates organization and structure in your blog. And this way your audience can find other useful posts related to a specific category. Pretty simple, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So head over here to posts, and actually you see posts and pages. And just to clarify, posts are specifically used for creating your blog content, and pages are used for static pages like your contact us, an about us page which we'll be adding soon so go ahead and click on posts and then add new then the first thing I want you to do is head down to add a new category and then type in customer and then leave it set at parent category and then add new category just select that okay cool now it's ticked off for customer and then leave the format at standard then I want you to head over to the Sydney media folder Open the folder, click on the blog folder, then the customers folder. And we're just grabbing the article from in this folder. Then open the Word document, customers, and then go ahead and copy the title here. And then head back and copy all the content. And you'll probably have to tighten this up some because the edits or the formatting is going to be a little bit off. So copy all that and then just paste it in. So I'm going to clean this up real quick. Real easy to do. Then you're about to add some images to this post to really make it come alive. So right here where it says insert image, go ahead and highlight all that, and then click this add media. Then select from upload files, not media library, that's what we've been doing, so upload files, select files, and this is how you upload individual files or individual photos. And then you're in the Sydney media folder, and then you wanna select on blog, then customers, and then this was the image. So choose that. Okay, and everything looks good here. Alignment, none, so that'll put it right in the center. And we'll go ahead and select large, and then insert into post. Perfect. So let's head down to the next image, right here. Customers for life. Add media. Upload files. Select files. Same folder, there's the image, choose that. And we'll leave this at large as well. And then insert into post. Cool, and then one more image. Outlined, add media, upload files, select files. Choose the image large and then insert into post that's it and you can always edit these images and make them smaller or bigger but we'll go ahead and publish the post and take a peek at what it looks like so everything looks good you got your title 
you got the right format, you got the, the category, which is real important. It organizes all your posts, and you have your images. Pretty cool. So go ahead and publish, and now you can view your post by clicking there. Pretty awesome, right? Wow, and I forgot one key thing. Go back to edit post, and then head down here to set featured image. Upload files, and this is the image that will represent the blog post on the actual blog. So go ahead and select files, and then we want blog post thumbnail. So go ahead and select that and choose it. And then set featured image. And there it is. And then update the post. So as you can see, you can always make edits to these posts. That's the beauty of blog posts. So we can go ahead and view post. And there's our featured image. So head back to edit post up here and time to add your second blog post. So head back to posts and then add new. And remember the first thing that you want to do is head down to add a new category. And we want to title this category traffic. And this breaks up our content so just organize it have a good structure for your blog. We're going to leave that at parent category and then add new category. Format set to standard. And then head over to your Sydney Media folder. Blog, traffic. Open the Word document. Copy the title. Paste it in. Copy the content. Paste it in. Tighten this up a bit. Looks good. Enter images. So this is the first one, so traffic outline. Go ahead and add media. Upload files. Select files. Go to the folder blog and then traffic. Traffic outline. We'll go with the large over here on the right, then insert into post. Head down. Highlight that, add media, upload files, select files, choose image, large looks good, then insert into post. It's pretty big. <laughs> okay, and then everything's looking good. Set featured image. Click that, upload files, select files and the thumbnail. Choose that and then set featured image. Then publish. Pretty easy, right? Once you get the hang of it, you practice it a couple times, it's so easy to do this. And these images are really big. You can always edit these to make them smaller, but you get the idea. So we'll view post. Pretty cool and see our recent post right here, our category. So everything's nice and tight. You see how this is all coming together? Really clean. We'll clean up this menu over here some, but yeah, you get the idea. And the reason why I'm going backwards because it doesn't reverse chronological order. So my it'll be website traffic customers. You see? So head to edit post, then add new, our last post here. And then we want to add a new category, website. Leave it parent category, then add new category. That looks good. Then we'll go to the Sydney Media folder, click on the blog, then website, then open the Word document, copy the title, paste in the title. Paste it in. Tighten this up some. Copy that and then add media. 
Upload files, select files, to Sydney Media, blog, then website, then website outline, and then choose that. Go with large, and then insert into post. Perfect. Then one more right here. Add media, upload files, select files. There you go. Choose that. Perfect, then it's large, it looks good, and then insert into post. Awesome. And you're gonna love this. This is awesome. We're about to add a video to this blog post, and look how easy this is. So head back to the media folder, or actually the Word document, and just copy this link. And all this is, is just a YouTube link, a YouTube video link. And then you just wanna paste it right in, and you'll have a video live on your page. <laughs> awesome, right? And actually, that's the how to make a logo with uh, Logo Maker. So you can take a peek at that when you're ready. And then just uh, one more thing. Go back down here to Set Featured Image. And then Upload Files. Select Files. And then our thumbnail. Choose that. Set Featured Image in the bottom right. And that's it. Pretty easy, right? So go ahead and publish the post. View post. And welcome to this quick little video which will teach you how to design your own logo to use on your website. Okay, congratulations. You've successfully set up your blog properly. And let me show you a couple things real quick just to take note of. So our categories right here, customer traffic website. Whenever you post a new article, say for example under traffic, all of your articles in this category will be right here. So say someone reads this article or they click on it, they find it in the search engine results, then they're going to see all of your other articles in the traffic category, giving you a lot more exposure to your content, which is really important. That's why it's so important to have your blog post broken up into categories so people can find stuff that they're very interested in and then you become the authority and start to build that know, like, and trust factor with your audience. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Just head back and then edit post. And just real quickly, I just wanna show you how easy it is to edit one of these images. If you wanna change the size, you just click on the image. If you want to change the size of the image, just click on it and then hit the little pencil icon. And then you can change it right here or do custom size. Pretty easy. So now you have your blog successfully set up and we are going to move on to adding a contact us page and an about us page. And you're going to start to see how this is all coming together. Okay, so we're going to get straight into that now. So go ahead and head over to pages and then add new. Click on add new. And like I said before, pages function a bit differently than blog post pages. And pages are typically used for static pages that more or less stay the same, like your contact us page and about us page, which we're gonna set up right now. And so to create your pages, we're gonna be using something called Page Builder right here. And this is one of the recommended plugins you installed shortly after installing the Sydney theme, if you can recall. And this gives you the ability to add in several different elements to customize your page, which are also known as widgets, like we've been talking about. And this is done by adding individual rows where you just pop in different widgets to customize your page. So for example, our Contact Us page is going to have three rows in each row having its own widget. And I'm going to show you how to do this right now. So if that sounds confusing, it won't be. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is title this page. Then head down to Page Attributes over here in the right, and then select for Template, Front Page. Then head back up to Page Builder right here. Click that, and then you're going to add your first row. So click on Row, and then for Row Layout, go ahead and select 1. And then in the bottom right here, click Insert. Now this first row that we're adding is our Contact Us page title. So 
we want to edit the row by clicking on this wrench icon and click on edit row then click on layout and then for top and bottom padding put in 40 and padding is just the space in between the different rows and we're making this just right so there's not too much space between the rows okay then scroll down and then for row layout select full width and go ahead and hit done at the bottom perfect okay now you're gonna add a widget to the row that you just set up so go ahead and click on the row and then click add widget and then look for the visual editor and click that and then from here just go ahead and click edit and then just in the title all you want to type in is contact us and that's it and then go ahead and select done in the bottom right and then that's the first row so now you want to add in your next row so go ahead and click add row and for this one we want to set row layout to two so now you'll see that this row is broken up into two halves or two sections and we want to change this first one on the left side to 70 percent and the one on the right side to 30 and this will allow you to add in your content details and map on one side and your email contact form on the other side and when you have that all sorted go ahead and click on insert in the bottom right next you want to go ahead and click on the wrench icon and then edit row and then click on layout and then for top bottom padding type in 20 and then for row layout select full width and then select done in the bottom right perfect so now you want to add in your widget for this left section so go ahead and click on add widget and then head to visual editor so head up to the widget and click on edit and this is where you're going to add in your contact details I'm going to head over to the Sydney media folder and grab mine so I'm going to go ahead and copy all this and then paste it right into the visual editor. Tighten this up a little bit. And what's cool is in the visual editor, you can bold things, italicize, add links. So I'll go ahead and bold this. And if you wanted to add a link, all you would do is just highlight it and then click this. So I'll break this link right here, copy all this, and then create a link. So click link, perfect. And then all you do is hit the apply, and now you have a link. And you can do that for Facebook, all your social channels as well. Really easy to do. And then once you're done here, go ahead and click done head back up to add widget and then search for the site origin Google Maps select that and if it pulls it over to the right you want to drag it below the visual editor on the left here then go ahead and select edit and this is really cool it's gonna add a Google Maps to your contact us page and go ahead and just type in your physical address and then for these settings you're probably gonna need an API key and this is real easy so just right click this and open it up in a new tab and then just head down and set and select get a key select yes and then create an enable API and just copy this API key then head back and then just paste that in there that's done let's set this to 300 leave that interactive and 12 is good zoom level and then that's it and then just go ahead and select done in the bottom right and now you have a map next we're gonna add in the all so important email contact form but before we do that I want you to go ahead and publish this page so all your edits are nice and saved so you would head up here and click on publish I've already done that but yours we should say publish and click that and then once that's done 
I want you to head over to contact and then contact forms. And this is the contact form 7 plugin. So all I want you to do is click contact form 1. And then everything is pretty much good to go here. Click on mail. And then right here where it says to, enter in a good email address where you want to receive your emails when people submit their contact information. Okay, the from field, this is the email address that you'll be sending outgoing emails from. So this would be something like your first name at your domain name.com. So for example, james at websitesmadeeasydemo.com. And to set this up properly, we have an awesome video detailing this process. It's a little outside the scope of this tutorial, and I'll link it to the end of this video so you'll have that resource. So if you've made any changes, go down and make sure you save them and click Save. And then all you need to do is head back up here and then copy this short code. And that's it. And this short code is going to be different for everyone, so don't copy mine. Make sure you copy yours and then head to pages and then all pages and then contact us and then select edit and then over here select add widget and then visual editor and then select edit and then go to text over here and then just paste in the short code and then select done and that's it. Then go ahead and update the page. Perfect. And now go ahead and view page up here. Awesome. Looks great, right? Okay, so that's it for your contact us page. Now that you know how to do that, we're going to set up your about us page. So let's head over to the dashboard and then click on pages and then add new. So let me explain real quick what should be included in your About Us page. And the About Us page really gives you a chance to describe what makes your business unique. You have the, the opportunity to describe your core beliefs while communicating your true personality that lies behind your brand. So there are many ways you can do this from including your mission and vision statements to adding in your personal bio and company story. And you can include your core values or simply statements about what you do and why you do it. So you want to be sure to include the name of your business, of course, any members of your team, your own personal story, and the story of your business, and how it really came to be. And so also be sure to include what makes you an expert in the given topic and what your main purpose for your business is. Now, you don't have to use all of that. You can take bits and pieces from it, but that's a general overview of how you should create your About Us page. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, of course, is title your page. So we'll just title it About then head down, page attributes, and front page. Select front page, and then you want to select page builder. Then you want to select add a row. Bring that down to one, set row layout to one, and then insert. Then head up to the wrench, and then edit row. And then select layout. For top and bottom padding, select 40, and then head down to Row Layout and select Full Width, and then select Done. And then you want to add in a widget. So this is the widget that will add in our title for About Us page and our content for the About Us page. So select that, and then go down to Visual or Find Visual Editor, select that, and then click on Edit. So then head up to title and title this about or about us. I'm going to head over to the Sydney Media folder and grab my about page content. And paste it right in. Make some quick edits to tighten this up. Now you can edit all this to your liking. I mean, there's several options here. You can add in different colors. You can bold it, italicize, just play with it. Link things. It's really cool with what you can do in this visual editor here. So now we're going to add in an image. So go ahead and select on Add Media, and then Upload Files, Select Files, and 
Sydney Media Folder, and then this image, Business Success. I love this image. Okay, we'll go ahead and full size. Let's do medium, 300 by 300, and then insert into page. Now, if you click the pencil, remember, you can edit this, and you can move it to the right, center, left. It's in the center now. We'll move it to the right, and then click Update. And then you can move it to the left, whatever, whatever you prefer there. So that looks good. Okay, then we'll go ahead and select Done. So that's the first row. Now I want you to add in a row for your call to action so you can send people to your contact us page to get started. So go ahead and click on Add Row. And then we want to select one here. And then Insert. And then you want to select the wrench and then Edit Row. And then click Layout. And then for top bottom padding, select 30. Then for row layout, select full width. Then we can go ahead and click out of layout and select design. Then select the background color. And then just type in pound 222222. And that's going to change the background color of the call to action. Okay, and then select done. Now you want to add in your widget. So go ahead and click add widget. Then look for the call to action widget. Select that. And then head over to edit. Then I want you to head to design. And then select headings. Under headings color, select color. And then you want to select white. And then after that, head up here to you can leave the title blank. And for your call to action, I'm going to type in, in all caps. Or you can enter in something like, get started with a free consultation. Okay, then you want to add in a link. And this is going to be, go ahead and copy that and paste this in. And we're going to link it right to our Contact Us page. So that'll be your domain, of course, forward slash contact us, forward slash. The title for your button could be get started today or contact us. And then go ahead, once that's all sorted, go ahead and click done. Now there's your about us page. So go ahead and click publish and then go ahead up to view page and check out the page. Pretty slick, right? So head back to edit page. Okay, awesome. You've now finished your contact us page and your about us page. And if you're happy with everything here, go ahead and publish or update and head back to your WordPress dashboard. So click on dashboard and then head down to services and then add new service. So what we're going to do now is add in three services sections or what I like to refer to as three call outs of value. So this section must speak to the pain points of your audience and should be beneficial to your audience. And you want to get them excited to want to learn from you and want your products and services. So we're going to add those in right now. So just like a page, go ahead and title this with your service name or product and below that in this area, just add in a little description. Now, after you're done with that, you want to head down to the services icon section right down here and click the link right here to grab an icon for your service. So I'll open this up in a new tab and it should bring you to this page right here, the font awesome cheat sheet. And this is just full of a bunch of icons and all you do is sort through it and find the icon that you like, highlight it and save the short code that represents the icon that you want for each individual service. So it's real easy. There's quite a few of them here, but go through them and make sure you get just the right one for your individual service or product. So here's the one that I'm choosing for my first product here. So all you do is copy that short code and then head back and you're just gonna paste it right in. And then just paste it in right there. And that's it. And right here you'll see it says service link there's an opportunity to link this service or product to another page to go in more detail about the product or service if that's something you want to do. So for now, we are all done here. 
And all you do is just go ahead and publish. And now you have your first product or service set up. So we're literally gonna repeat this process two more times, creating three service sections in total. So go ahead and click on add a new service, title the service or product, type in a little description, then head to the cheat sheet and grab your short code. Copy and then we're all set there and then go ahead and publish. Then head back to services and then add new service. Go ahead and title it. Type in a little description. Then head to the font cheat sheet. Grab your icon short code. And then go ahead and paste it in. Then go up and publish. And that's it, you're all done with your services or products. So this is these three services are gonna make up the service section on the home page of the website. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So now head over to services and then all services and make sure you see all three of them right here or however many you've created. And now you're gonna make all these services live on your home page. And to do that, you're gonna head over to pages and then all pages. Now see your homepage, click edit underneath that. Now if you haven't already guessed it, your homepage is really just made up of a bunch of widgets like we've been doing. So go ahead and click on the page builder, then add a row, select one, and then insert. Now head up to edit the row, click on layout, and for top bottom padding, type in 60. And then row layout, full width, and select done. Now head back up and select add widget. And you're looking for the Sydney FP services type A widget, which is right here. Click that, then select edit, the edit link. Then all you're gonna do is type in services and the rest you can leave as is. Click done, update. Make sure this is set to front page right here. And now head to the home page of your site, refresh it. There it is. <laughs> so next we're gonna add a call to action, then the portfolio, then a video. And we're moving right along here. So it's all coming together. It's pretty awesome, right? So now you're starting to see how everything is gelling and how this is all this whole process is really landing. Okay, so now you're gonna add in your call to action. Head back up here and then click on dashboard. Then head over to pages and then all pages and then under home, select edit. And you're just gonna add in a new row for your call to action. So the purpose of the, the call to action is to give more value to your audience. The reason why they're on your website. And this gives you the opportunity to go deeper by giving them more value and delivering that value through email. And this could be a free consultation, a free report, a free video, something that leaves the visitor in a better place as a result of coming to your website. Always, always lead with value and take care of your audience. So let's add in this call to action. So go ahead and add row, bring this down to one and then insert. Then you wanna select the wrench and then edit row. Then select layout. And for top bottom padding, type in 40. Then head down to row layout and select full width. Then click out of layout and select design. Then for background color, click select color. And then type in pound 222222. Two, two, two. And then for the background image, and this is really cool. It'll add this background image to the, the back of the call to action. So select image, and I wanna select this one right here. And you could select whatever you want, or just leave it uh, with the kind of dark black uh, background, but I think this looks really cool. Go ahead and, you'll see in a minute. 
select done. And then you're done here with the settings for the row. So select done. And then you want to add your widget. So select add widget. Then look for the Sydney FP called action widget and click on that. Then select edit. And then for your title, you can leave that blank. And then for your call to action, you could add something like get started now with a free consultation. I'm going to add in create a profitable website with our signature three-step WTC system. And then for the link, you would add in your domain forward slash contact us forward slash the contact us page that we set up earlier. So I'll grab and you'll see what it looks like. Copy this. So this will link right to the contact us page. And so for the title for the button, type in something like click here or start now. Then go ahead and click display the button in line with the text. So that'll display the button right next to the text. And then click on design and then head down to heading color or headings color and select color. And then select white and then select done. And then after that, go ahead and update the page and then view page. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so head back to your dashboard. So head back up to the top and then click on dashboard. So next, I'm going to show you how to add in a featured work or portfolio section to showcase your work and create a story in the mind of your audience. And you've heard the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. And this beautiful design is going to help facilitate that because you're connecting with your audience through imagery, which tells a great story. And everyone loves stories. And this is really wowing your audience, showing them exactly how you can help them through killer images and case studies. And I'll show you how to set this up properly now, you can even use this area for pictures of your products with descriptions. And you're going to love this. It's really easy to set up, pretty much like what we did earlier when we set up your services section. So let's get straight into it. So head over here to Projects and then Add New Project. And then you want to title your project. And then head over here to Set Featured Image. And this is going to be my first image right here. And then Set Featured Image. And then right here, you can just add in a little description. And that's it. Really, really easy. And then just go ahead and publish. Then you can head right back up here to add new project to add the second one. This one I'm going to title creation. Set featured image. Set featured image, paste that right in, and then publish. Very easy, right? Go ahead and select Add New Project. So I'm going to title Pinnacle. Paste the description. Set featured image. And we'll select this one. And then select Set Featured Image and publish. Then select add new project. This one I'm going to title begin and head down to set featured image. Select this image, set featured image, paste in the description and publish. Then head back up here to add new project. This one I'll title growth. Paste in the description, set featured image. I'll select this image, set featured image, and then publish. Add new project, type in journey, paste in the description, set featured image. This is going pretty quick. I might just do them all. This one, set featured image. Publish, add new project, Aspire. I, mean, I love this image right here. Aspire, this one. Set featured image, then publish. 
and add new project. Just three more. So this one's going to be first blog post, set featured image, set featured image, and paste in the description, publish, add new project, paste that in, set featured image. And then publish. And last one, add new project, adventure. Paste that in and then set featured image, set featured image, and then publish. So that's it for your featured work in portfolio section. Now, if you want to add more, you can, of course, and add in your products and your descriptions. So however you want to use this area. And you're about to see exactly how this is all going to come to life on your home page. So let's just go back to all projects and make sure everything has been saved. So you should have 10 in there. Now you can just have five on your home page. You'll see what I'm talking about or 10, whatever. I, I like 10. It looks good. Okay, so all that looks good. Now head over to pages and then all pages. Then under home, select edit. And now it's time to add a new row for our work section. So go ahead and select add row, bring this down to one, then select insert. Then if it pulls it up here for some reason, all you do is just bring it right down. Then you want to edit the row and then select layout and then type in 60 and then for row layout, let's do full width stretched. Full width stretched for this. And then go ahead and click Done. Now you want to add your widget. So select that, then add widget. Then you're looking for the portfolio, Sydney FP portfolio. Select that. Then go ahead and click Edit. Then title this, whatever you want to title it, Portfolio, Our Work. Then that's it. Then select Done. And then update the page. Pretty easy, right? So now you have your portfolio or work on your home page. Starting to look really awesome. Okay, I love this part. I'm going to show you how to add a really cool video to your home page. So head back to the dashboard. And video just deeply engages and connects with your audience. So it's great to have. So head back to pages and then all pages. Then you want to select edit under home page. Then add a new row. And then select one. And then go ahead and insert and then drag this down if it drops it right there all the way to the bottom then select edit row and for layout top bot we'll leave the padding just leave that blank and then for row layout full width then click out of layout and go to design and then head to background image Now we're gonna put a really cool background image uh, behind the video as a cool backdrop so select image, upload files, select files, and this will be in the Sydney media folder. Backgrounds and background video. And then choose that. Then select done. And you are done here, so select done. And then you want to add in your widget. So add widget. And you're looking for the Sydney video. Here it is, Sydney video. And then all you do is click edit and then paste in your URL. And you can put any YouTube URL or Vimeo. This is actually a really, really inspiring video that I just love. So once you're done there, go ahead and select done and then update, view page. Now check this out. <laughs> Pretty awesome.
Okay, now I want you to head back up, select Dashboard, and now you're going to add your blog to the home page. So go to Pages, and then All Pages, select Edit under Home, Add Row, bring this down to 1, and then Insert, then drag this down if it shows up top, then select the wrench, Edit Row, and then for layout, top bottom padding, type in 60. And then for row layout, select full width and then select done. Then select add widget. And you're looking for Sydney FP latest news and select that. Then edit the widget. And then type in for the title latest stories or blog or you know latest news whatever whatever you like there go ahead and select done and then update and now your blogs on the home page so view page scroll down and now I'm going to show you how to add some testimonials for social proof and be sure to put legit testimonials I'm actually grabbing ours from our YouTube channel so let's do that now so head to the dashboard, click that, and this is just like adding projects for the most part. So right here it says testimonials, click add new testimonial. And then I've saved these in the Sydney media folder under testimonials. So I'm going to grab those real quick and then pop them in here. Now if you wanted to add in a my team or my employees page, you would go through this exact same process we're about to go through. We're not going to add that in this website build out, but that's just something you want to take note of. So just real quick, if you wanted to add your employees, you would just click this link and go through the same exact process we're about to go through now. So title the name of whoever the testimonial was given by. Then all you would do is just type in or paste in the testimonial. And then for set featured image, you put in the picture of the person. And then set featured image. And that's it. Then you publish it. And then add new testimonial for your next one. Paste in the name. Grab the testimonial. Paste that in. And then set featured image. Set featured image and then publish. Perfect, that's it. And then to see your testimonials, click on all testimonials. Okay, we have two there, and you can add as many as you want. I'm just gonna use two for now for this example. And then head to back up to pages, all pages, and then edit under home, select that. And then you want to add a new row, bring this down to one, then insert, then we'll drop this all the way down to the bottom, looking good, and then select edit row, and then for layout, leave the top bottom padding, just leave that blank, and then for row layout, full width, and then select done, and then add widget, and you're looking for the testimonials, Sydney FP testimonials, select that. And then we have some edits to do in here, so edit the widget. And then up here to title, you can type in what our clients say. And then for layout, that's fine. Design, we're gonna change all this to white. So widget, Select white for that, widget title color, headings color, white, and then font color, white. And then select done. And that's it. And then update the page. Whoops, one thing I forgot. Head back, I want to um, edit the row for the testimonials. So click the wrench, edit row. And then for design, select that. Then select image under background image. And we want this one, the people. And go ahead and select done. 
and then select done again, and then update. And then view page, and then scroll down. <laughs> Looking pretty awesome. Wow, the site's really coming together. Okay, so now you're gonna add in your social media section. So this time, head up here to just edit page, just a quicker way to get to this page. So then I want you to go ahead and select, this is the last row that we're gonna be adding to complete the home page. So go ahead and add row, bring this down to one, then insert, then drag it down all the way to the bottom, then select the wrench and then edit row. And then for layout, for top bottom padding, type in 10. And then for row layout, select full width, then click out of layout, then on design. And then for background color, click select color. And then type in pound 222222. And then select done. Next, you want to add your widget, which is the site origins social media widget. But before you can use this plugin, you have to activate it. So first, update your page to save all the changes. And then you're going to select plugins and then click on installed plugins. Then head down to site origin widgets bundle and click on manage widgets. And then all you want to do is head down to the bottom where it says social media buttons and then activate, click activate. Now you're good to go. So head back over to pages and then all pages, then select edit under home, then head up to add widget, then select the site origin social media buttons. Then head to edit, click that. And then under networks here, just select add. And you can add as many as you want. I'm gonna add in four. So I'm gonna add that four times. Two, three, four. And then all you do is pop in the URL for your social media, desired social media network. So I'm gonna grab mine. So we'll start with Facebook. And just copy and paste these right in. And then icon color, we wanna leave that white. And background color, pound. Two 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 two. That's done. Then for the next one, do Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Paste that right in. White background color. Pound two 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 two. And then current color. Select that. Then select network. YouTube. Then select color, we want to type in white here, our select white. Then background color, then click current color. And then last one, select network, and this would be LinkedIn. There it is. Grab the URL, paste it right in. Then Click select color, that's white, that's good to go. And then select color for background. Type in 222, 222, and then click current color. And that's it. And you can add in as many as you like. So once you've got all that sorted, go ahead and click on design and layout right here. And this is just the settings for the social media buttons. So, that looks good. You can leave that ticked off. Then for button theme, select flat. Then icon size, leave it at normal. Slightly rounded is good. Padding, select low. And then a line, select center. And then margin, leave that at low. And then go ahead and select done and you are set to jet with your social media buttons. So go ahead and click on update, of course, and then view page. 
And I just want to say congratulations. You've just now completed the home page of your website. You should be pumped. This site looks amazing. It has a killer user experience. Your audience is going to love it, and you are too. So um, it's been fun doing this. And we're going to, we're going to tighten this site up even more, uh, just little tweaks and edits here and there, just to get it really dialed in. So let's take a peek and see what those social uh, media buttons look like. There you go. Looks really good. Okay, now we're gonna add in a custom menu for your site. So head back up to the top and then click on Dashboard. Then you wanna head down to Appearance and then Menus. And just go ahead and if you have any of these here, go ahead and just remove them. And we're gonna start from scratch. So I can show you how to do this properly. And this is the menu that's going to be up top for your uh, for your navigation. So go ahead and select all our pages, and then click Add to Menu. And then you can title this whatever. Just leave it Menu One is fine. And then you can reorganize these. So I would put this being the first home, then About, Contact Us, and Blog. That looks good. And everything looks good here. So. Just go ahead and save menu, and now you have your navigation for your website. So go ahead and click Visit Site, and you can see it right up here. Now if you'd like, because on the home page, the very first page, it's hard to see, and I like it that way. It's kind of clean, but you can change this to uh, black if you want. And all you do is go into, I'll just show you real quick, if you just click Customize, and you just go to colors and then just click on general actually no it's not in general it's under header and then for top level menu items that's it you would just change it to black okay so if you want to leave it at black go ahead and select that and make sure you save and publish I'm going to change it back to white save and publish and you can X out of that now, this image right or this header right here, the heading, if you want to make this bigger, I prefer it bigger. I think it looks better. I'm going to show you how to add in some custom CSS to be able to edit that. So it's just going to change this headline up here. So what you want to do is head back to the dashboard and then head to, yeah, right here, appearance and then custom CSS. And this is a plugin, if you don't recall, that we installed earlier. So you can get this custom CSS on the blog at websites made easy forward slash blog forward slash adventure under the customer section and the little snippet of code will be there we also have it in the uh, the Sydney media folder and I'm just gonna grab that real quick and it's just heading custom CSS and all you want to do is literally just copy this code all of it and paste it right in can erase all that first and then just literally erase all that and paste it right in and then click update custom CSS and it's that simple and then go ahead and visit site looks pretty awesome right I prefer it bigger and you can adjust the size and if you want to adjust the size just go ahead and click back and then you would just change this to whatever size anywhere I mean it was set at I'm not sure what the default is but you can play with it and, and see what uh, your, your preference is so all you would do is just change out this to you know 50 or see what it looks like at 60 then you would just click update and then visit site it's about the same size as it was and the, the only thing that this little code is going to change is that headline and then update custom CSS and it's that simple cool now I want you to head up here to your menu and select blog and then we're gonna tighten up this sidebar right here and just clean this up so it's just optimized properly for the website so head to the dashboard and we're doing this for the best user experience so head to appearance and then go to widgets and then for sidebar right here, go ahead and remove meta. So select that or click that and then delete. Archives, delete that. 
recent post and search, delete that, and then head down to, and these are other widgets right here. So head down to grab the, grab this Sydney call to action and drag that up and then pop it right up top. And then for title, just type in free consultation. And this is pretty small area, so we just want it real tight with the verbiage. And then link, we're gonna link this to the contact us page. So paste that in, forward slash your domain, forward slash contact us. And title for the button, just click here. And display the button in line with the text, click yes for that, or check that off. And then save it. That all looks good. Recent posts, we'll put categories up here. Recent posts and comments. And that's it. And you can play with this. I would go with this, it's just real good for the user experience. And of course, your call to action. And that's what we want up top. So go ahead and save that. And that's it. So go to visit site. And then if you go ahead and click on um, the blog, and here's your call to action. Perfect. We have our categories, recent posts, and then whatever comments come in. Looks good. Okay, so now I want you to head back to the dashboard and then click on plugins and then installed plugins. And see up here where it says WP Supercache is disabled? We need to enable this plugin. So please go to uh, the admin page, it says. And this is real easy. All you have to do is tick off caching on. So select that, caching on, and then update status. And then you can select test cache. And like I said, what this is going to do without getting too technical is speed up your entire WordPress website. And that's good for Google because they like sites that load fast for their users. So... And then you can go ahead, just dismiss this, and then head up here. So the time has come. It's time to launch your new website. So go ahead and click this button when you're ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. Congratulations, good job, you've done it. You've completed this video. I'm pumped for you, you should be excited. You're gonna have an amazing website that's gonna just blow your visitors away. And this can take a lot of courage to do, so you should be real happy about this accomplishment. So go ahead and click here to view your site. Yes, you are live. Welcome to your new home online. Let's take a look at your new website. Slider, services, call to action, portfolio, killer video, blog, testimonials, social channels. Very cool. So, be sure to toss me a like, subscribe, and we're always creating just killer stuff that's inspiring and that shows you exactly with what you need to get started with your profitable website. So thanks a lot for your patience and your follow through.